Hello everybody. The first step of the development of the gastrointestinal tube is the formation of the primitive gut. We already know that the amniotic vesicle is expanding over the yolk vesicle and this results in a so-called delimitation of the gut from the top part of the yolk vesicle. Here will be the allantois. And this part of the yolk vesicle becomes trapped inside while the rest stays outside. Both vesicles are embedded within the, the extra embryonic mesenchyma. So if this is the expanding amniotic vesicle expanding in these directions, then this is the, the primitive gut delimitation of the gut. Uh, this is the blindly ending uh, allantois, a rudimentary fetal membrane. And this is the rest of the yolk vesicle. This would be the extra embryonic mesenchyma. Therefore, later on, we got the amniotic vesicle and this part of the former yolk vesicle becomes the primitive gut. It has a close contact with the amniotic vesicle into spots, at two spots, then it's connected with the remnants of the yolk vesicle via kind of a duct. Let's label it the amniotic vesicle. And now this is the primitive gut, the primitive gut tube. And we will d distinguish three parts. The anterior part called foregut. The middle part called the midgut. The border between the foregut and midgut being the, uh, the hepatic diverticulum that will be explain later on when we discuss the development of liver and the posterior part called hand gut. While the artery that supplies the mid gut is the superior mesenteric artery, then the artery supplying the hand gut is the inferior mesenteric artery. The two spots where the endoderm of the primitive gut is in is very closely touching the ectoderm of the amniotic vesicle are the oropharyngeal membrane here which is a temporary structure persisting until the third week and uh, until the end of the third week and posteriorly it's the cloaca membrane cloaca being the term used for the common openings of the gastrointestinal and genital and urinary system systems uh, this persists until the third month so both these membranes will break down and opening the communication between the ectoderm and the endoderm. This is the 
remnant of the log sack and this connection between the primitive gut and the rest of the log sack is called a vitalin duct or the omphaloenteric duct Omphalos being just another word for the umbilicus and enteron being the intestine. So in a cross-section through the embryonic body and the, amnio um, the amnion, the inner fetal membrane, we would see the, the amnion, then the amniotic cavity, then the surface body of the ectoderm, Inside the embryonic body, there will be the neurotube with neurocrest, the notochord, the dorsal aorta, and th this gut tube, this intestinal tube, becomes surrounded by the inner layers of the lateral mesoderm that becomes this planchnopleuric mesoderm forming the mesenteries and the rest of the mesenchyma derived tissues of the intestine so this will be the amnion the wall of the amnion here the amniotic cavity with the amniotic fluid. This will be the body ectoderm. The neurotube and the neurocrest. The notochord the aorta dorsal aorta. Let me also add, add the body segments called somites, the mesoderm of the somites, and moreover the intermediate, intermediate mesoderm that will give rise to the urinary system. But moreover this would be the gut tube in general hanging on the dorsal mesentery and the ventral mesentery surrounded by the coelom ca body cavity That's the mesodermal body cavity. And here we got the somites and the intermediary mesoderm. So this ectoderm will, this amnion will close the umbilical region later on.